Okay, this is Brian Townsend for Cardrunners.com. Um, I'm making a 10-minute video for Card Player TV, and today I want to discuss the topic of uh, bet sizing and how I choose how much to bet um, for different situations. For say, a diff you know, a different flop texture, I'll choose to bet a different amount, and how much I'm trying to determine to bet on the river and things like that. Um, <clears throat> so here I'm going to throw away 7-9 offsuit. Uh, sometimes I would raise and sometimes I would fold, kind of depending on the flow of the game and things like that. Um, Preflop bet sizing, I tend to raise the size of the pot um, as this um tasty guy did, and I'm going to call here with eights, and really, ideally, I want to flop a set of eights before I'm going to want to play a big pot, um, but, you know, a flop like this, I won't throw my hand away for a single bet. Um, and here, I'm going to go ahead and call and try to reevaluate on the turn. as I would do with a lot of hands, like 6-7, pocket 7s, uh, a 6. So by this guy overcalling, that shows a lot of strength here. And this guy might actually check an overpair. And even though I'm giving a lot of free cards here, um, I really can't stand any heat. I can't stand getting raised. Um, so I am going to give a free card. Yeah. And here, I mean, this guy could have overcalled with a draw, but him betting into two people just so, shows so much strength. Um, I just don't think my pocket eights are going to be good here. So I'm, I'm going to throw my hand away. Um, so pre-flop, uh, bet sizing, I tend to just do pot size raises. And... I do that for a few reasons. Um, one, mathematically, uh, preflop raise cuts down on their implied odds, generally versus my range, um, a good amount. Whereas um, raising, say, five times the big blind, um, and a preflop raise is three and a half, or a pot size preflop raise is three and a half times the big blind. And raising, say, four or five times the big blind or is um, a little too large. It's kind of overbetting the, the pot, so there's no reason to do that. Um, so preflop, I tend to always make it uh, the size of the pot, but I will vary that if there's players who are extremely loose or extremely kind of crazy or calling me a lot. Um, you know, if somebody wants to call me when I raise it 12 times the big blind, uh, I will definitely do that. But for the most part, players are smart, and they're only going to call you with aces, kings, queens, jacks, when you do start raising um, huge, huge amounts. So uh, the idea with preflop and bet sizing is you want to raise a mount so that people fold their garbage hands, because if you just double the big blind, the big blind's going to call with so many hands just because it's so cheap, it's only another $2. And you don't want to raise too much where you lose all action from their kind of more marginal hands. Um, you know, if I'm raising to $20 here at a 1-2 blind no limit game, um, I'm really not going to get called by a whole lot of hands except uh, really premium strong hands if the player is smart and good. So that's kind of the thought process on preflop. Um, and as a general rule of thumb, you want to raise about the size of the pot. Um, and that'll be affected if there's, say, somebody limping in front, or if somebody makes a raise in front and you have a premium hand, or maybe a not so premium hand and you want to make a move. Um, so if somebody were to limp in front, well, that would actually change the size of the pot. But so if they limped in front, I would say that they had a reasonable hand. So I would try to raise even more. Um, here, I do not like this guy's call with sevens, and I do not like this guy's push with ace-10 offsuit. Uh, these hands are just a little too weak to be putting in um, half a buy-in with, I mean, 
or eighty dollars, almost half a buy-in. So I do not like their bet sizing. Um, <clears throat> so if I was fan card there, I would not have re-raised to just eighty dollars. Um, I would have re-raised to say twenty-two dollars there, twenty-three dollars. Um, there's no reason to just repot to eighty dollars because you're really shutting out a lot of hands. And maybe that's why Light Fox decided to call is because people tend not to re-raise. A large amount with uh, their non-premium hands, so nobody usually shoves eighty dollars in there with aces, kings, or queens. So White Fox probably thought that his sevens were good. Um, here, if it's folded to me, I'll open with king four suited. Um, it's about one of the weaker hands I would open with. And again, I do a pot size raise um, because that's a bet sizing that cuts down on collides and light foxes odds to call, um, especially since they're out of position to me. And it also gives me good odds if they do wake up with a big hand. Um, I'm not putting in too much money um, into the pot with them. Uh, so if they do have a big hand and re-raise me, I can throw it away or I can profitably raise to seven dollars. And sadly, we have a uh, table getting a little bit shorter here, um, but that's okay. And looks like we might be going three-handed here. Um, here again, I'm going to make a pot size raise, but I'm going to bump it up to about seven or eight here, actually. Um, reasons for this, I'm playing heads up. I do have position, so I don't need to raise as much because position um, effectively acts as... Uh, here, I don't know this player at all. Um, and you could definitely make a case for calling here with King Jack suited, but since I don't know how he plays or what type of hands he's re-raising me with... And I haven't seen anything wild or crazy out of him. I'm going to throw it away. Um, that was a pretty tight play, though. And if I had king-queen suited, I would not have folded there. But with king-jack suited, um, having to call another $20, he made a quite a large re-raise. Um, I, I wouldn't be able to profitably play that. Sorry about that. My... Uh, Windows updater popped up. So, <clears throat> um, in position there, geez. Sorry, the security software. Um, so, in position there, I made it $8. And um, the reasoning for that was I want to cut down on the hands that he's going to be able to call me with profitably. And he has to call another $6, and he'll be out of position. So he really needs a strong hand to be calling my preflop raises there, heads up. And this is always nice when somebody limps the button and doesn't make charge you that extra 4 or $5. Um, but since Evaporator did raise, I'm going to have to throw away the 7-9 offsuit. But I would have loved to see a free flop with that hand.
Uh, that was a very strange play by Evaporator betting the river there. I don't see many worse hands than King High calling. Um, it was just kind of strange. Uh, I just saw this guy limp with like 3-6 suited, I think it was. Um, yeah, 3-6 suited here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to raise him up. And he did seem loose. He had no trouble calling another $4. So my bet sizing is actually going to change here preflop. One, because the pot's larger, but also because this guy seems really loose and he's willing to call. So I'm really going to charge him. Um, so I'm going to make it $11, whereas if this was a tighter player who had limped, I would have raised less because he's more likely to limp with aces or kings and a big hand and limp re-raise me. So I don't want to cut my odds off. And now I made a, a big raise and I charged this guy the max. Uh, here I'm going to follow up with a bet. And if I get raised or called, I'm going to be done with a hand. Um, I'm going to bet about $17. And this is called a continuation bet. And the reason I chose this size is it's a big enough bet where he's going to throw away like two fives, two sixes, two sevens, or maybe a pair of fours on this board. Um, but it's a small enough bet where I give myself really good odds on him uh, him calling or folding. He only, you know, if he folds more than 20 or 30% of the time to this bet, I'm going to be showing a profit, and that'll happen for sure. So uh, here I get min raised. I don't really know what this means. I don't know this player. Um, I'm not going to just go all in here, but uh, so I'm going to fold for now. But he could definitely be weak and be making a move. Okay, I'm going to wrap this video up. Um, thanks for watching, and this was Brian Townsend for CardPlayer.com and CardPlayer TV.